Oh. Yeah. So, Josh, welcome to Alcatraz. We're in the main cell house here, between cell block B and C. Uh, and this long corridor is known as uh, Broadway. OK, so other than the water out there, which yeah, is pretty, pretty lethal, yes. uh, what were these guys up against? Well, I mean, it's, it's right before you, steel and concrete. Right. I mean, when this place was built, it was the, the largest steel-reinforced concrete building in the world. Okay. Wow. Designed with one purpose, and that's to keep you in. And I'm imagining it was also pretty well guarded? It had six guard towers with over 60 guards. It had the highest ratio of guards to prisoners of any prison. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about our three guys. Where were they? Let me show you. Just around here. The first cell we visit belonged to the mastermind of the escape. Here's a cell of Frank Morris. OK, so we've got one of our guys right here. Yep. The cells have been preserved to look just as they did on the night of June 11th, 1962. And then what about the Anglin brothers? Okay, Where are so they? So they're a little further down, same row. Oh, so they're not right next to not each right other? Not right next to each other, although the brothers are. OK. So here we are. This is, the, this is John Anglin's cell. OK. And brother Clarence right there. Wow, so they're side by side. Side by side. You want to take a closer look? Can we? Open up cell block B, level one. Perks of being a former FBI agent? It has its perks. Wow, look at this. This is the cell. This is amazing. Close up cell block B. What now? Wait, no, Stuart. Stuart. Josh, you knew it would end up like this. It was inevitable. Uh, I, I have to say, though, now that I'm in here, yeah. it's incredibly small. I see in the back of all three of these cells a yeah. big hole in the wall. Each of these guys had to tunnel out of their cell. Right. How? There was a ventilation hole there okay. with, a, with a, a small uh, ventilation grate in it. But they had to widen that. They had to widen it. They noticed that the concrete was somewhat brittle and could be chipped away. So for six months, they are carefully, quietly toiling away at yes. this. And then what? Where, where does that hole lead? That leads to a utility corridor. So let me take you there now. Don't make me crawl through. Will you open this thing up, please? <laughs> Get me out Open up cell block B, level one. I see the governor got my letter. <laughs> All right, come on. Let's go. We're about to walk the exact escape path the prisoners took from their cells. Do not expect to see this on your standard tour of the rock. Riding with Stuart has gotten me exclusive access. After half a year of meticulous preparation, the prisoners exited their cells through the vent shafts and ejected into a seldom visited maintenance corridor where the guards would not have been patrolling. This is crazy. There's just this maze of passages behind the yes. cell blocks. OK, this is the backside of one of the vent holes. So this is where they tunneled through. Yep. Right here. Look at that. That's unbelievable. So once they punch through this, where do they go from here? So they go up. Up? Yep. The prisoners climbed the pipes of the utility corridor to punch through into a large raw space above the cell block. We come up here, and we're going to take a lift. OK. As you can see, kind of at the top of the cell block. Yeah, we're above everything here. Yes. So they climbed up from the utility corridor where we were earlier. There's a tarp up here that just gave them cover, and they turned it into a workshop. A workshop? A workshop. What are they working on up here? So up here is where they're making the raft and life jackets out of uh, stolen raincoats. OK. Yeah. And there were steam pipes up here that had enough heat that allowed them to fuse the rubber together of these life jackets. And after they made the dummy heads that we saw in the cells earlier, they could put those down, and it would appear that they were sleeping, and they had all the time in the world to do this. It's really, really clever. It's ingenious. These guys were dialed in, uh, and, OK? But all of this was child's play compared to what they had ahead of them. So Josh, if you look at, at the ceiling, just across there, there's a hole. Oh, that's their escape tunnel. Okay. That is the escape tunnel. That leads them to the roof. And then they're outside. Then they're outside. When they made their way to the roof, they walked along this way all the way down. And then there was a drain pipe that was at the end of the building that's no longer there. 30, 40 feet, they worked their way down this drain pipe. And it's the middle of the night. Middle right? of the night, pitch black. 
carrying all the gear they've got with them, right? The raft, their life jackets. Right. You know, they make their way down, and then they work with all this gear, then they work downhill toward the water. After climbing down the vertical pipe, and with most of the guards inside the prison after lights out, the men most likely scurry down the south side of the island toward the water and ferry dock. From there, who knows? This is one of the actual fake vent grates, handmade from cardboard, layers of soap, and paint. It was used to cover the eroding concrete surrounding the air duct. They matched the paint color of the prison wall. It sure did. Crazy. This is prison DIY crafting at its finest. We talk about these guys working on this for like six months. Right. I mean, you can uh, see it. You can see it right there. Yeah. It's evident. Spoons and discarded blades used for months to chisel away at the concrete in their cells. A handmade periscope to discreetly check for guards. These guys are so MacGyver, it's, it's ridiculous. Yep. And here there is a small mirror. Right. If you can look inside there. Oh, right. So they would have looked through here, and it's literally a periscope for them to see around the corner, I guess, yeah. out of their cell. What we think is that they wanted to see on top of the roof. When they made the final push out, they wanted to make sure that no one was on that roof. Incredible. A vacuum cleaner motor converted into a drill. And many of the ideas, like the life vests, came right out of the prison library from old issues of popular mechanics like this one. I love that one of the key items for their escape, yep. they learned how to make from literature that was in the prison. Right in their hand. It was like a handbook for escape. It's unbelievable. See? Further education. It'll set you free. <laughs> really well. These men were bold, smart, and meticulous planners who took their shot when the moment presented itself. There are a couple of items right over there that I think you're going to want to see. All right, intriguing. Let's more, go. more goodies. What do we have? Oh, my <laughs> word. Wow. So we partnered with the FBI to create these 3D scanned replica heads made from the original dummy heads used in the 1962 escape. Wow. And, and Josh, looking at these heads, is there anything that jumps out at you? Um, there are four of them. Exactly. So why are there four of them? Well, there was a fourth conspirator in the escape plan. A fourth inmate, Alan West, had been working with Morris and the Anglin brothers. But West was unable to get past his vent that night, and the three others left without him. In exchange for not being charged, West gave up what he claimed was the escape plan to the FBI. According to his confession, the three inmates were going to paddle the raft 2.4 miles to Angel Island, and from there, cross the bay to the city of Marin. But there's just one problem. The waters around San Francisco are as tough as any prison. When the tide goes out, as it was the evening the inmates escaped, billions of gallons of water rush out of the bay and funnel under the Golden Gate Bridge. The FBI maintains that the men must have been swept out into the Pacific. The evidence in this room shows that the convicts covered every single angle of their escape, so it's hard to imagine that they didn't have a plan to deal with the bay and get to shore.